Item Number SCP-187 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-187 is to be attended full-time by medical personnel who are to tranquilize or sedate her as needed. She is to be kept under a full set of medical restraints to prevent her from harming herself. Specifically, she is to wear padded mittens at all times in order to prevent her from attempting to damage her own eyes. If SCP-187 refuses to open her eyes during authorized testing or during site inspections, the use of eyelid speculums is authorized. All statements made by SCP-187 during testing and site inspections are to be recorded and analyzed. SCP-187 is to be prevented from interacting with D-Class personnel who are nearing the end of their cycle. SCP-187 is to be spoon-fed. Mild tranquilizers are to be added to all her meals. Description SCP-187 is a Caucasian female, early to mid-20s, 180 centimeters tall. SCP-187 exhibits a unique form of precognition, whereby she sees everything in two states simultaneously, as they are and as they will be. She does not see minor changes, only changes to what would be considered the norm. For example, in testing, when presented with five D-Class personnel and asked which of them would change their clothes, she couldn't answer, as such a change isn't drastic enough. However, when presented with five D-Class personnel and asked which would be shot, she was able to predict which one every time, as she could see the injury inflicted just by looking at him. SCP-187 cannot foresee future events or changes to items at which she is not currently looking. Rather, she can see the future state of whatever she is looking at. This has led to some unexpected consequences. For example, as part of the usual tests performed on new human or humanoid SCP acquisitions, SCP-187 was given a standardized IQ test. When the results were collated, she was revealed to have an IQ in excess of 300, the limit of the tests. This, of course, would have made her the most intelligent human being on the planet. However, her intellect did not seem that high based on her initial interviews. The test was repeated four times, and each time, she got the maximum possible score, answering every question correctly. When she was interviewed regarding this, she revealed that she did not actually know the answers to any of the questions. Rather, she had seen the tests, with the answers already filled in. When she was given a computerized IQ test, where her input didn't affect the future state of where she entered the answers, a keyboard rather than a pen and paper, her IQ was revealed to be 97, slightly below average. This happens with every written test presented to SCP-187. She can see the answers in advance, based on what she herself is going to fill in, even if the tests are in a foreign language she does not understand. This presents a possible ontological paradox, an injection into the present of information from the future. Where this information, the correct answers, comes from is unknown and possibly unknowable. SCP-187 is suffering from ongoing psychological damage as a result of her anomaly. When, for instance, she is in the company of people who are soon to die, she simultaneously sees both their living, healthy selves and their dead sometimes decomposing corpses, depending on how far into the future they will die. As a result, pharmacological assistance is required to keep her lucid. Due to the effect that prolonged malnutrition is having on SCP-187's health, and the impact that 187's death would have on the Foundation's medium-term emergency planning, SCP-187 is to be blindfolded during meals. Meal times are to last no longer than 15 minutes and must take place in a location for which SCP-187 has not predicted any significant changes. Remarks and comments made by SCP-187 which turned out to be prophecies. The Divorce of Dr. SCP-187, your ring. Doctor, my ring? SCP-187, yes, your wedding ring. Doctor, what about it? SCP-187, you're not wearing it. Doctor, I am. Look, it's right there. SCP-187, you won't be. 
Dr. Wang's husband filed for divorce the next day. When she returned for duty, she was no longer wearing her wedding ring. She had been married for 19 years, more than half her life, so wearing the ring was considered normal, and not wearing the ring was enough of an abnormality for SCP-187 to see it. The Deaths of the Following D-Class Personnel D-16124 SCP-187 Why is he so swollen? D-16124 was later exposed to the vacuum of space after being sent through SCP-120 in order to dial it to the next destination. D-16198 SCP-187 He's cute. Interviewer Who? The man standing outside that cell. SCP-187 Yes. What's his name? Interviewer I don't know. Hey, you there. D-16198 turned to face them, at which point SCP-187 gasped and burst into tears, screaming, he's going to die. Interviewer He will? How do you know? SCP-187 He's got a massive hole in the left-hand side of his head. D-16198 was later terminated by gunfire while attempting to escape the site. He may have attempted escape due to SCP-187 screaming, implying that she can set so-called self-fulfilling prophecies in motion. D-16206 SCP-187 His legs, his legs, his legs, his legs, his legs, his legs, where are his f***ing legs? D-16206 was killed when SCP escaped from its cell and bit him in half while attempting to flee the site. The attempted escape of SCP While being escorted through site SCP-187 stopped outside SCP cell, staring intently. Dr. Klein, what are you looking at? SCP-187, how did it break through such a heavy door? Dr. Klein, excuse me? SCP-187, that door is nearly a foot thick. How did it manage to destroy it? 17 hours later, SCP somehow managed to work free of its restraints and did indeed tear through the door to its cell. However, Dr. Klein had alerted security due to SCP-187's statements, so an armed response team was ready and managed to subdue SCP with gunfire. The cost of keeping a full-time medical team on hand to ensure SCP-187's well-being is obviously high. However, the fact that her anomaly allowed the prevention of an escape attempt by SCP, a Keter-class subject, shows that she may be useful for more than just pure research. A proposal has been submitted to introduce her to seemingly indestructible SCPs, in the hopes that she will see them as either dead or destroyed and be able to describe the manner of death or destruction. This proposal is pending. The potential temporal logistics needed careful consideration. She would, in effect, be seeing methods of destruction or termination, which would only be possible because she saw them. This has caused concern among several higher members of staff. Details of further experimentation may be found in the following experiment log. Experiment log of Dr. Gears testing exposure of SCP-187 to other SCP items. Date Undisclosed Experiment 01 Exposure to SCP-173 SCP-187 produced a sustained scream for 1 minute 38 seconds before losing consciousness and falling to the ground. SCP-187 had to be physically removed and maintained a state of catatonia for 48 hours. SCP-187 regained consciousness, but was unable to remember what she had seen, and remained in mild shock for several days. Experiment 02 Exposure to SCP-139 ARC SCP-187 stated that she saw several bone fragments scattered around, along with data expunged, as yet not identified. SCP-187 became extremely upset, screaming, It can see me! It's out. It can f***ing see me. Several times. It had to be physically restrained and removed. Experiment 03. Exposure to SCP-162. SCP-187 felt no pull from SCP-162 and asked why she was viewing a pile of melted slag. SCP-187 removed from containment without incident. 
Experiment 04. Exposure to SCP-529. SCP-187 appeared very nervous, asking, Is this a joke? Several times. SCP-187 reported that she saw a cat and that it looked somewhat lonely. SCP-187 proceeded to pet SCP-529, moving her hand over where the hindquarters would be, as if stroking the tail. Increased observation of SCP-529 requested. Experiment 05 Exposure to SCP-003 SCP-187 appeared nervous, then said hello to SCP-003. SCP-187 appeared to then engage in conversation with SCP-003. However, no member of staff was able to hear any speech or other auditory emanations from SCP-003. When questioned, SCP-187 responded that SCP-003 was a very nice lady. She seems really smart. Increased security and review of SCP-003 has been requested. Experiment 06 Exposure to SCP-882 SCP-187 entered the containment area and viewed SCP-882. SCP-187 moved back several steps and appeared to be in mild shock. SCP-187 was questioned and responded, Jesus, it's huge. This is amazing. SCP-187 stopped responding to questions and continued to stare at SCP-882 without blinking for three minutes. SCP-187 had to be physically removed from the containment area to continue questioning. SCP-187 appeared dazed and responded, It's so… I mean, it's so complex. It's sick, with all the bones and blood in it, but it looks like the inside of a 50-foot tall clock. It's… kinda pretty. Shortly before SCP-187 was returned to containment, SCP-187 suddenly fell to the ground, screaming and holding her head. After several hours, during which SCP-187 was heavily sedated and unresponsive to questioning, SCP-187 reported grinding, smashing, squealing. It sounded like a train wreck that just went on and on. SCP-187 reported the sound lasted for approximately three hours before fading out of hearing. Increased security around SCP-882 has been requested. Experiment 07 Exposure to SCP- Data expunged. Experiment 08 Exposure to SCP-015 SCP-187 was exposed to SCP-015 with the help of Team Zeta-9. SCP-187 reported only slight differences in the structure until she opened a door leading outside of SCP-015. SCP-187 reported a hallway of pipes stretching for miles and miles. SCP-187 stated that she was not able to see the other end of the hall, but that it seemed to branch off to the sides with lots of side hallways. Zeta-9 team members reported no unusual behavior within SCP-015 and that the door opened into open air with no hallway of any kind visible. Experiment 09 Exposure to SCP-415 SCP-187 begins observation of SCP-415 and immediately appears to be agitated. SCP-187 appears to be feeling physically ill and asks repeatedly to be removed from observation. Questioning reveals that SCP-187 observed an empty, diseased corpse that had partially decomposed. Increased security for SCP-415 advised. Experiment 10 Exposure to SCP-455 SCP-187 is taken to observe SCP-455 from a small Zodiac craft. SCP-187 takes a sharp intake of breath, then shakes her head and attempts to look away. SCP-187 has to be physically manipulated to continue observation of SCP-455. SCP-187 makes several inarticulate noises before screaming several times. SCP-187 observed a huge thing. It was a mass of metal, just floating, like a big island made of rusty bulges. It was like it was sick with tumors, but it was all metal. I could feel it. It's not alive, it never was, but it thinks it is. It's 
What the hell was that? Recontinuation of recon team insertion into SCP-455 is under review. Experiment 11. Exposure to SCP-343. SCP-187 enters containment with SCP-343. SCP-187 and SCP-343 appear to converse without incident about general topics for nearly half an hour. SCP-187 stated that SCP-343 appears really nice, if kinda lonely. For a little girl, she's really well-spoken. What is she? Six? Maybe seven? Increased research efforts into SCP-343 are under review. Experiment 12. Exposure to SCP-646. SCP-187 becomes violently ill upon observation of SCP-646. After recovery, SCP-187 stated that she observed giant maggot things. Hundreds of them. With kinda human bodies and faces. They had these tentacle things all stuck into each other. They were all squirming and… God. There was one near the middle. It wasn't soft. It had some kind of shell. And this kind of jelly head. It was… I think it was mating. Enhanced security for SCP-646 advised. Experiment 13. Exposure to SCP-106. SCP-187 observation test aborted after 30 seconds due to escape incident by SCP-106. SCP-187 appeared to observe staff under attack or undergoing intense physical torture and mutilation two minutes before attack or capture. SCP-106 appeared to specifically target staff under observation by SCP-187. SCP-106 appeared to specifically avoid harming SCP-187 on three separate incidents. Under questioning, SCP-187 said, that… that thing wanted an audience. Someone to watch. It likes it. SCP-187 refused to elaborate. Further questioning pending. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-186 to end all wars right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.